getting ready for this hike. Goat Canyon Trestle Bridge hike up near the desert. How's this? You hydrating? Yep. You got enough water? Yeah. All the fluid. Ice. So uh, Harper's Camelback just exploded. It had a little hole in it. it didn't really explode, but uh, he thinks he thinks it's because he put too much ice in it. I don't know if that's the case, but we'll go with that. So that sucks. Uh, but we have we have plenty of water. He's got a lot of water. I've got a ton of water. So we sh we'll be fine with this. <laughs> The Goat Trestle Bridge Hike. This hike is 16 miles long and starts down near the bottom of Interstate 8 close to Ocotillo. It is mostly flat along the railroad with a few detours around some tunnels that are blocked off. Old abandoned railway cars sit along runoffs graffitied up. Hikers can go explore these works of art as they pass them by. <laughs> it's so cool. The total elevation climb is around 1,200 feet and is very gradual apart from the detours. The hike itself usually takes about six to eight hours to complete. It is a very strenuous hike especially through the harsh desert environment. The railway was built to connect San Diego to the farms of Imperial Valley and ultimately the markets of the Eastern United States. Starting in 1907, John D. Spreckles took on the job of completing this transportation system. Spanning 148 miles, the railroad weaves in and out of the United States and Mexico. 70 miles today is outdated and not in use. It took 13 years to complete due to the engineering challenges, particularly the extremes of the desert heat and cold. The railway was nicknamed the Impossible Railroad due to all the challenges that came up. In total, there are 2.5 miles of bridges and trestles along the railway. There are also 21 tunnels in all, totaling a full three miles underground. All of these had to be bored through unstable loose rock of ancient landslides. The estimate for the entire track was six million. But by the time it was completed in 1919, the cost soared to 18 million, equaling 301 million in 2022. The worst part of the construction went through the Carrizo Gorge, which included 17 tunnels, totaling 13,385 feet in length. The 16-mile hike runs through a large segment of this area. There's a tunnel up ahead. It is wise to bring a light for the tunnels, because in some, there is large debris and railroad ties on the ground posing trip hazards. We got lucky and found a light at the entrance of one of the tunnels. Oh, 
our journey takes us all around and over to there. We get around that corner. The railroad's over there. Hey, look what I see. Box cars. Yeah, Further in, around four miles, there are three more box cars that are sitting off to the side on some tracks. The front and back cars are burned out, and the middle one is the only one left that looks somewhat normal. Soon after the old rail cars, Tunnel 8 comes right up. It is closed off, and the second detour will appear to the left. When constructing the tunnels, workers used these paths to bypass and haul supplies back and forth between the entrance and exits of the tunnels. Along these trails are steep drop-offs and cactuses. The cactuses are all over the place, and it can be a trial to navigate around them at times. Harper rubbed into one of these on the ground and now they're stuck on his shoe and they hurt him very, very bad. How do they feel, Harper? Very bad. Huh? They're the needles. Yeah. Hard to take out. Can you feel them in your foot? I, I, I felt it for a second if I would have. So yeah. You ever hike this trail? You see these wonderful cactuses. Stay far away from them. Or wear something long. Something that's going to protect your skin. Coming down around the bend, we're getting back to the tracks. And over there is the next tunnel. You can barely make it out in the shade. Good hike. Harper's still dancing with his cactus in his, in his foot. This will learn not to kick cactuses. <laughs> for about four and a half miles. Break number one, because it's been so nice and cool and breezy. We have made it to, I think, tunnel number nine or 10. And it's off in the distance behind me, if you can see it. And the e-bikes are on their way down the trail. I'm surprised the tires didn't get popped by any cactuses, but uh, yeah, they should be coming and passing us here pretty soon. Harper's making noises. He's happy. He got fed. He got some water. He's doing well, even though his camel back broke in the very beginning. He couldn't really tape it, so he just got bottles of water. Sorry, Harper. But uh, yeah, we are at the next tunnel. And if you look, after this tunnel, there's another one right through it. You probably can't because the light and the shadows. But uh, yeah, nine and then tunnel 10. These tunnels were created over a century ago and still stand today, which is impressive for the area. My baby Sasquatch. My baby Sasquatch. Warm? You want it warm? Bro, we're about to be in a desert. The tunnels are supported with wooden structures and beams that shore up the loose areas. These span throughout most of the tunnels, but there are some where the rock is so hard they are not needed. Here we are, sandwiched in between two tunnels. I think it's going to be a left so I can see why. <laughs>
the half a mile tunnel. And uh, we're going through it, it's kind of cool. The other end is way up ahead. There's a lot of rock falls in here. There's not a lot of uh, support because it's pretty much solid rock all the way up and down the walls. But uh, super cool to be actually be inside of this. So cool. Never in my life have I been in something like this ever. The experience was unreal to be inside a half a long mile tunnel built over 100 years ago by such old technology. So me and Harper were in the middle of the tunnel and we're still going through. This is literally a long, long tunnel, a half mile long. It's nice and cool out of the sunshine, that's for sure. Man, oh man. It's incredible how someone built this entire thing. Yeah, me and Harper are making it to tunnel 15. By the looks of it, this should be one of the last tunnels that we get to before we actually get to the Goat Trestle Bridge. But uh, tunnels are definitely nice in this heat. After the half a mile tunnel, we had one more to go through, and then we arrived yeah. at our final destination, Dude, Goat one. Canyon one. Trestle Bridge. When Tunnel 15 collapsed in 1932, the railroad eliminated the greater part of it, shrinking the tunnel from 937 feet to 178 feet. This was done by constructing the 633 foot long wooden trestle spanning Goat Canyon. The canyon floor below is 185 feet from bottom to the top of the rails. The project was costly at $319,771 in 1933, but was also an engineering marvel and the company at the time started to brag about it. In 1986, the trestle was designated as a historic civil engineering landmark. Well, we made it eight miles later. And it's still August, mind you. With it always being hot in the desert, wood catches on fire very easily in the high heat. The company installed a water system with piping and valves to mitigate the bridge from ever burning. The pipes were connected to a water tank on the hill above the trestle. When traversing over the trestles, it is better to walk on the wood that is double stacked on the tracks themselves for safety. The outside catwalks are not always trusting with the wood that's been sitting for years. sunshine and then we hit the clouds so we've been really lucky today it's been an amazing blessing having that cloud cover the land of cactuses don't step on any Closer to the 
cars. We traveled quite a long distance. You look over across that canyon. But you're probably not going to be able to see it with the camera. The tunnel way over there. And around that bend, that's where we came from. After a few tunnels, we came to the last detour around the tracks. It is important not to miss this. It is marked with wood. We were very lucky the day we went because on the way back it was cloudy and we could feel small raindrops occasionally while we were walking. It was August and we knew it was the hottest month. Knowing it was going to be hot, we overpacked on water and snacks, not knowing what to expect. It is always better to be prepared than not. So you never have to worry about rusting out because they always get spray painted regularly on the From our journey, we realized we only needed about three liters of water. A camelback works just fine for the journey. Well, do we hit 16 miles? 